So I came back, or uh, this morning I should say, I didn't come back, and I just, I've put all the, I've siliconed all this stuff down. I'll show you. So where the ice and water shield was, was loose at the top, I always leave an inch up past uh, the metal. And then I come back and I'll put the, I'll put the silicone and you know, cause it won't hold up on its own. Remember this side was sagging down quite a bit and this the ice and water shield, it won't grip the masonry on its own. So, you know, I just come back after and I put this um, through the roof product. And this is what I use for the flashing too. Uh, this stuff is great. It sticks to wet, it sticks to anything. I mean, you don't really want to use it on wet surfaces or too dirty surfaces, but I mean, the stuff, you know, it sticks to dirt, you know, for the most part. And um, it's actually really elastic and it seems like a really good product. I've been actually using it for a while to do stuff like this. So first off, before we do any cutting, we're going to go around and we're going to figure out, you know, at what, what heights we want to do our cutting, at, at what heights we can do our cutting. Obviously, you know, I can't, um, I can't cut any lower. I don't want to put, you know, lead flashing down here. Um, so I don't have too much of a choice here. I don't really want to go on top of this one. She might take measure. I usually use the eight inch lead. So I've got eight inch lead here and I can't go on top of that one because that's eight inches from here to here. And I still have to um, get my lead to turn and go into the joint. So ideally I would cut, I would cut this seam here and then I would just have a little bit left to turn at the bottom like that. So this is gonna be my first cut here at this height. And I'll just follow this brick, the very bottom of that edge of brick, the whole way across, so I cut that. And now I've gotta figure out where my cuts are gonna be going up the sides. Okay, so we can see where the old lead was, right? And I have eight inch lead, so that means it's eight inches wide, okay? And so I'll have about an inch and something wrapped around the corner. I could go on that one right there right here because I'm covering up all this nastiness here and so I could just follow this brick here and this brick here and cut back you know eight inches roughly because I got an inch coming around the front inch and a quarter or whatever so uh, I could do that like that and then the next piece would go here so we might be able to follow this right in line with with uh, what we're doing here um, so one of the things that, that you should know that we're going to try to achieve is, you know, picture my, my lead, it's eight inches wide, right? Okay. I don't want the, I, and I go with eight inch lead f for a specific reason. Well, you know, I feel like it's easier to work with and it, and it kind of looks the best when it's done. Um, but a lot of guys will use 12 inch lead, right? So I, I have a piece of eight inch lead here and I have plenty of room for my ice and water shield to come up, you know, and, and tuck underneath behind the lead. So most times when you're doing this, um, say, say someone's gonna, they're hiring a roofer to come and do their roof, you know, and they're like, well, you know, before we do this, I need my chimney fixed or I need my chimney rebuilt. A lot of times you're going to be doing the lead before the roofing goes on. What you want to do is make sure you got about three inches here, the whole way up, three inches off the roof, like this, three inches off the roof. And you don't ever want your lead to get into that space. So you could imagine if I had a piece of 12 inch lead, you know, coming off the front, it doesn't work out so well, right? And what you, what you never want to do is have your lead running all the way to the edge of the roof. Because, because then there's no way to get ice and water shield behind your lead. So you wanna make sure, you can you could almost just strike a line here before you do your lead, an imaginary line three inches up from the roof, and you just don't get into that zone. Uh, you know, if for, for some reason you have to cut into it a little bit, you know, no big deal, but just, just leave the roofer or whoever plenty of room, you know, so down the road when they strip and redo this roof, they can, you know, they'll fold all the lead up 
they'll be able to put new ice and water shield up on underneath. Okay, so that's gonna work out pretty good. And so I'll measure from the corner and we're gonna have four inches on every single piece, right? So four inch overlap on each piece. So we'll just kind of mark this out. You can see it. Okay, so this is the first piece that's coming on here. Second piece will come from here. And I'll cut I'll cut the top of this joint here when I do it. Okay, and I know that I'm gonna have to just cut beyond this mark here because this is eight inches. And I'll cut just beyond on either side just to give me a little bit of extra wiggle room. Um, and then, so I'll keep just measuring this up every four inches. I'm just going to mark it. Okay. So we got the first piece. That's the second piece. So this is the third piece right here, right? So this, this will be the third piece. Comes like that. And I like to just, you know, just take your time, draw it with the Sharpie so you can visualize it. And I feel like, I feel like it goes, like, you know, you, you don't want to, you don't want to be making mistakes doing this. So do I have eight inches here? I do. So I got my overlap. Could I do, I could go up here, here, but probably, probably what I do is I just come over. I got this piece, okay? Maybe be easier if I, if I number them so you can see them. So this is one, two, this will be three. Okay, third piece. So now do I step up here like this and do two pieces or do I come up, do I do two pieces here, step up? See, I've got a bit of a mess here. So, hmm, like anytime you get like a, an area that's kind of messy and you know, I parged all this up because it was pretty nasty underneath it. So we do want to try to cover that. So maybe what I do is, um, I got my third piece there. And then one, two, three. And then what do I do with this fourth piece? Do I come over? Let's see, I have, where's my mark? 16. I'm gonna cover most of that stuff up if I do jump up there. So instead of coming over two, I'll come right here, 12. There, that'll be my next piece. We'll call that four, right? It's 20. Okay, I don't wanna come over here because all this will show above the lead. So now I'm gonna come up here, right? So this will be it, come up here. It'll come down like that. That'll be five. And do I want to come up here? Or do I want to come over two? At some point I have to come over two because the roof isn't working out perfectly with the with the four inch step on the flashing. Um so I always just try to get uh, four inches and that's just how I like to do it. Four inches of coverage. Uh, other guys might do it different where they have a specific amount um, to try to match the pitch. Um, and sometimes that looks good, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so, but this is just how I'm gonna do it. So five inches or f five pieces. And then if I come over straight here, I do yeah, I see, I think that's what I wanna do, is come over, and if I just, if I stay this line here, K, 
Okay. I have five and six on the same on the same level. Okay, and all this nastiness is gonna hide here because the next one will jump up here. So call that 24, 28. Let me just keep throwing marks at four inches. So six, we get a four inch overlap. This is the back of the six inch piece. Okay, this is the front or the back of the number six piece, sorry. Uh, and this will be seven here. Okay, and we'll come like that. Right through that nail. Yep. Okay, seven, eight will step up right here. So that's eight. And then nine, what does nine do? Yeah, nine, I could come over. Where's eight end? Right there, that's fine. I could do another double here and that will help me out back there. So, yeah, so I've done two here, back up one. Do I go over two here or, yeah, I think I go two, I'd go over two there. So, right to there and I'm not I'm not cutting inside my ice and water shield so that's good so right here right so I've got the front of the eighth piece and I've got ninth this is the back of the ninth piece so this will be ten right here yeah see this brickwork is real crooked up here too 10 and then okay, so, I mean the brickwork's crooked everywhere look at it here just okay I'm about an inch off on being perfect on four inches so no big deal at the end I just stretch these couple pieces just a hair each and then I end up right to the back where I need to be not a big deal. So 10, and then this one will go up one here. Oh, just. Right here. Come over. This is a little aggressive here, but there's not much I can do about that. So that's 11. And I think I come out two here. Yeah, so 11 and 12 right on the same one. 11 right here. The back of 11 comes to here. And then, no. So the back of 11 comes to here and then we, yeah, then we'll do this. So this is, this is 12. So 12 there. Okay.
All right, guys, we are all cut out and I've taken my blower and blown out all the saw curves to get all the dust out. Just got to roll a lead up here. This is, um, this is eight inch lead and it's just eight inch sheet lead. So it's a 50 pound roll. This is how they sell it in 50 pound rolls. I've got this, I picked this up at my, my masonry supplier. I'm gonna measure, so roughly I'm at 47 inches. So I'm gonna add five inches to each side and this is just how it's gonna go. Five inches to each side. I'm gonna hold my tape there and I'm gonna go right to 57 inches. Give that an extra roll. I'm just gonna mark it with my tape there at 57 inches. And I left a nice deep mark that I can see. Got my big square, decent blade. Just scribe it the first time and the second time you're cutting it. And then if you haven't got through, then that's it. Okay. So that's the first piece. And I'm gonna just mark, I've got a five inch overhang on each side. So I'm just gonna put a mark here that lets me know that's the five inch mark. And then also to hold this piece, I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. Okay, roll that out. So I'm gonna cut two pieces uh, at an inch and a half. Okay, so I've got these pieces, right? And these pieces are gonna go here. Look, I flip it over so it's upside down. And I'm gonna take it, not right from the outside edge, but right from about here. And just put that piece just like that. And it can be right up to right up to the ice and water shield. And we'll just put one nail on it like this. Okay, same thing on this side. Now it doesn't have to be exact, just kind of eyeball it in a good spot. Get a nail in it. And that's gonna hold our um, our front apron piece. Okay, we're gonna want this one to bend up the chimney, right? We don't wanna bend up crazy far, but um, if we could go like two and a half inches, that'd be pretty good. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do this. I've got it on the plank here. I'll just mark it here at two and a half. Okay, bring that to the, oh, I gotta slide all this down. Two and a half, okay, and slide that out to the edge of the plank, edge of the plank, and now let's just bend it like this. And it doesn't have to, we're not gonna try to bend it a full 90 degrees. We'll just get the bend started. Okay, decent, flip it up. Now we're just gonna now look, my five inch mark is here, so I wanna just be flush with that edge. And just push it up on each corner, like that. And we're gonna bend these over to hold it. And this is what's gonna hold this piece. Um, the nice part is, it's just, you know, it's temporarily holding it for now. And so we can move it about. We just have to, you know, bend that and we can move it anywhere we want. So for now, uh, always ne never hit lead with a metal hammer or anything metal. We're always gonna use uh, plastic or rubber. I prefer just to use like a decent rubber hammer. And just be gentle, work it into place. It actually, it works really, really easily, this lead. So just kinda give it some love taps. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we want this piece uh, perfectly parallel with the line of the shingle so it looks like everything's perfect. Well, I guess it depends on what shingle you measure from. These ones are two different spots here, but um, we'll just go with the basic line of 
this one here. So I'll get a measurement from this one. It's 13 inches there. So on this side, it's 12. We'll just, so we'll split the difference. We'll just make it um, 12 and three quarters. And then we'll bend that over at 12 and three quarters. So now we'll put this one at 12 and three quarters. So I'll just lower that one down a bit. 12 and three quarters. Beauty. Okay. Just fix all this stuff. And that just helps um, kind of the eye appeal. For some reason, uh, chimney chimneys and roofing are, are never like perfectly parallel whether it's the chimney came out crooked or the roof went on a little crooked but if you just do that it kind of makes it look better because then this piece will bend on top of it um, and you, you don't really see that that piece that it's crooked you just notice this one more so all right now what we're going to try to do is slowly start bending this one around okay and we're just going to massage it with the hammer a bit And you know that it's a decently warm day, so we should be able to get this to bend around. If you have trouble with it, you can put a little heat to it and just kind of warm it up um, with a little torch. And then, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? It seems to help if we just put a little crease in it sometimes, like, like that. I'm just gonna put a little crease heading out this way and that will help us get it around. Some brands of lead bend easier than other brands of lead. And uh, you just have to be careful with it because you're trying not to tear it here. And it will tear. If you, if you try to work it too fast or you hit it too hard or the lead, sometimes it's just the type of lead you bought. So we're gonna get it to make this corner here, okay? Now that we've got it kind of folded around where we want it, we can take and just kind of fold this over a bit and hit it down. This is really gonna help us get coverage, this piece here, okay? Most flashing uh, on the corner, guys have a real problem with the corners getting coverage. So they, they've literally got pinholes in the corner. So this is gonna help us, you know, get plenty of coverage on both sides. And, you know, there may be a better way out there. Um, I, I haven't, w without lead welding, without actually welding the lead and doing all the lead welding work, uh, which in the States, I, I've never seen anybody weld lead. It's still big in Europe where they, they weld it all up, but not here. So this is just how you do it without uh, oxyacetylene and trying to weld the corners. Um, this is how a good way that I have found to do it. There might be a better way. I just haven't found one yet. And no one's been able to show me a better way. So now I'm going to cut this piece. It's going to go over the top and I'm gonna cut that piece the exact same. I want five inches hanging out on both sides. Now these ones can be a little tricky to put in because you got this big piece of lead and, and the lead doesn't wanna stay flat as you're doing it. So you just gotta be gentle. Sometimes you can pre-bend it and uh, that will help you a little bit or you can try to go in flat. So I'm actually just gonna pre-bend this one just a bit and uh, We'll see how it goes in. So my blade goes in about an inch and three quarters on this on this grinder. This is a seven inch grinder with a seven and a quarter blade on it, right? And so by the time I hit the the piece here, it goes in just a little, yeah, it's like seven, it's, it's like an inch and three quarters, maybe with a brand new blade on it. So at best it's inch and three quarters, right? So what we wanna do is we're gonna go in about an inch and a half. Inch and a half is like, Pretty good depth if you can try it. Inch and a quarter is fine. Um, but we're just gonna do this one at an inch and a half.
Okay, and it doesn't, we don't have to have a nice crisp edge on there right now. We're just trying to bend it a bit. And every time you put a bend in metal like this, it gives it some rigidity. So you can actually move it, you know? And actually, since this edge's all, it's all kind of wavy, we'll just kind of roughly flatten it so we can sit it in that saw curve. Now I can actually pick this up and, and kind of move it a bit. So just gently, we're gonna try to get it in on one side and then you just slide it, you just slide it a bit, like back and forth. And we gotta get the bottom to bend out, bend out on that a little bit, just cause it's rubbing, okay? Now we're gonna see where we can get this to sit. If we can get it to sit, there we go. Oh. Hmm. Seems to be something in there right there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you just gotta be careful. If you feel something in there, don't force it because you'll bend it all up. I don't know where my mark went, so I'm gonna remark this. Five inches. Okay, nice and gentle. Okay, that's... That seems actually there's a, just a little bend in the chimney here, so we're gonna bend that lead to push it in on this side. Give it some. And sometimes it depends on how my, my grinder comes through here. Sometimes it doesn't sit the best on some of the crooked brickwork underneath. And uh, you know, I don't, you don't actually get in a full inch and a half. Sometimes, sometimes you're only getting in an inch and a quarter. Okay. That side's good. Let's work our way down here. Just be gentle and don't be in a rush. Okay, bend this side down. Okay, pretty good. Now, look at how we're gonna build the corner. See, we've got all this hanging out. And the traditional way people do it, you're not gonna get much coverage on this corner here. So I do it a little bit different so I can get more coverage, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take in this piece of metal here, I want you to just to push it down like this. Push it down and get it to go in like that, okay? And then we're just gonna bend that flap there. You can just take this with the rubber hammer right behind it, get that corner a little bit crisper, and now we're going like this, okay? Gently and slowly, we're going around with it. Don't try to get it all at once because you'll tear it. So this lead will stretch. It will stretch, but you gotta you gotta do it a little bit at a time. Now this is why lead is so great at flashing chimneys because you can bend it around a corner like this. I mean, there's no substitute for it. If you, without welding copper or welding, uh, you know, something else. This is just the best way to flash a chimney, and so that's why it's been done like this for so long. And, and this is just a bend that I came up with after doing uh, hundreds and hundreds of lead jobs on chimneys. Um, 
I finally messed with it and I got this idea um, to do it like this and I have a lot of coverage on this corner here, okay? That's what you're looking for is coverage. You don't want pinholes near the corners. So there's a lot of coverage on this. Okay. Now this, you see, you notice that kind of tapers away a little bit? That's fine. That's just because that this metal underneath tapers, the brickwork tapers, the other lead tapers, it kind of builds it out. So it just comes at a little angle sometimes and it's perfectly fine. Now, sometimes this corner doesn't look very pretty. Like I, it's kind of all creased up, right? Don't worry about it. It's actually gonna get covered up by this next piece that comes on. It's gonna cover all that up, okay? All we're looking for on these two pieces is to get the most coverage on this corner. And look how much coverage we've got there. That's, I mean, that's a lot. That's more than you'd see almost anywhere else. Okay, now we're gonna take our measurement for this one and, not, and, and hopefully it's the same measurement on that side and um, we can cut these two pieces the same. So what I like to do is I just take my, um, for this first one, I come down and I just say, okay, I want four inches of lap on that bottom, right? So I put it on four, then I measure up. And so it's 11 and a half, so I'm gonna add about inch and a half to that, right? So I'm gonna be at 13 inches for the piece on this side. And the other piece on that side should be the same. Sometimes on old houses where the chimneys are really crooked, it's different. Um, so we'll just double check. Um, it'd be nice to be able to mirror. Yeah, it's close. It's within like a quarter inch, okay? So we're just gonna mirror the cuts. For every cut I do on this side, I'm gonna do one for that side. I'm actually not gonna cut those yet because I still haven't put this one in. Keep getting carried away, right? So now that it's bent up and ready to go, we actually are gonna take it out, okay? So just unbend it a little bit. It wants to hold in there pretty tight. But you got the main bend on there, so that's all you're really looking for, okay? Loosen it up a bit, come on out. Give it a wiggle. Try not to bend it as you're taking it out because it will, it will just crease. Give it a slide. Okay, good. If you've bent it a little bit, you know, you just try to make sure you straighten it out before you stick it back in. All right, here we go. This is the magic stuff right here. Um, this stuff is called the through the roof. Um, it's done, it's made by Sashko. Sashko, Sashko. And they make the Lexel product too, which you could use the Lexel product on this too, it'd be fine. Um, there's other silicones out there that are probably really good too. Uh, I used the, uh, the GeoCell um, ProFlex for a while, and that seemed to be pretty good, but um, I just refuse to buy anything that's not in a plastic tube now. I won't buy something in a cardboard tube because that GeoCell stuff, I would buy brand new tubes and the cardboard would literally explode out the side. And so you'd have eight or nine bucks down the tube because, because literally the cardboard rips out the side. If you forget it in the back of your truck and it gets damp, the tube is no good. So these are plastic and they can ride in the back of the truck with the tools. So, uh, and it's actually really, the stuff, it's, it's actually really, really good stuff. This stuff stretches like crazy. You cannot, like, you just, you stretch it for days. And it, and it stays clear, so. All right, so we're gonna put, we're gonna fill up this whole saw curve as much as we can with this stuff. Got a loose piece of lead. Okay, so like I was saying before, I don't fill, I don't do this with mortar. Um, some guys do, I don't, this is how I prefer to do it. This silicone is waterproof, mortar is not. And also mortar, when you're just taking out one saw cut at a time, the mortar doesn't bond to the lead. Never mind, like it's gonna be 70 degrees today, right? So if this lead heats up and you put fresh mortar on that lead, it's just gonna cook, right? So what happens the next day when the roofer gets here and tries to lift up the lead? All that mortar just cracks out. This stuff is gonna be rain ready in a couple hours. 
it's waterproof. It stretches, right? Because the lead moves. This lead wants to move a lot, right? It's because it heats up, so it expands a, a lot and contracts a lot. All right, there we go. Just changed out the batteries. Um, so I was just saying that this, this lead expands a lot. It wants to move a lot. And this silicone will allow it to move a bit and be waterproof and hold really good. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a bead on just the, the very back edge here. Um, what you don't want to do is put silicone all on the back of this piece, okay? We don't want this piece to stick here because the lead wants to move so much. It just wants, lead wants to be free. It, it needs to move because it heats up and it expands and then it cools down and it, and it shrinks. So it has to be free to move. If you put silicone on here, it will wrinkle the whole front of the piece of lead in short time. So do not silicone it up 100%. Lead needs to move. I got a kink in it. Is it gonna go? I got a kink in it right there. There we go. Let's just slide it back and forth and just kind of massage it. Oh, perfect. Uh, make sure the tip of the gun is clean, right? You don't want to leave stuff on there. And so the next step is here. We're just on the very top. We're just going to run a thin bead right at the top. So just get a little bit of water and dip your hand in water before you smooth it out. I will actually, I'm going to go down and get some water. So I have some water and just regular water is fine. I mean, you probably could add some dish soap or something to it. It might even make it better. So a lot of guys are still going to argue the point of silicone versus mortar that I'm doing it the wrong way. And, you know, if the mortar works for them, that's fine. But just realize that I pay $9, just under $9 per tube for this. And this, the mortar that's here would literally cost pennies. It'd be, you know, you're like 25 cents worth of mortar to point that in. Okay. So I'm using a $9 tube and I have several tubes to do this chimney versus, I mean, one bag of mortar would do, I don't know how many chimney flashing jobs. So, I mean, there's a reason why this stuff costs a lot more than mortar. Okay, two pieces at 13. Now, so this one's, all the rest of them are gonna be basically the same. This one is a little different, right? So what I like to do instead of, instead of, let me just show you. So let's pretend like this is gonna be where it's gonna bend, inch and a half, right? Right over the top. And it's just a parallel square, you know, type of bend. So instead of doing that on that first one, I like to lean that back part out a bit, okay? And that's gonna help get this corner because the corners always build out. So we'll just, we're gonna set it down there like that. And we've bent it, we've bent it a bit. And then we're just gonna take a peek and see how it's resting down here. Cause we want, ideally you want the same amount sticking out down here as you have up here. And that's, that has made it pretty good. Otherwise, otherwise this piece would be like, this bottom would be just, just real close to that and we wouldn't get much to bend around. So, um, let me see my mallet. Okay. And you just, you know, so let's look here. we got about an inch and a quarter, which is pretty good. And then at the top, we're gonna have just an inch there. So let's just do an inch and then we'll stick that one out an inch too. And it sticks out more here than it does there, but all right. 
Okay, so now this bend is like this. Okay, you take the bottom under. Okay, and you just do it slow and it's gonna wanna bulge out on you and you just fold it right under. Okay, bring your mallet around like this. And get it, get it nice and tight together and now we'll bend this tab down. Okay. Just like so. And slowly bend this around. And that's pretty good. And so what we have here is, you know, as you can see, a tremendous amount of coverage and waterproofing. Uh, that's what we, that's what you're looking for. And as many chimneys as I've taken down and rebuilt, as many as I've done lead around, and I've looked at, you know, how, how a lot of people have bent their flashing um, over many different decades of doing it. You know, you know, I've ripped down chimneys from you know, a couple hundred years to 50 years to, to whatever. So I've seen a lot of what's been done and I've never seen a chimney flashing job with this much in the co coverage in the corner. Th that's why I like doing it like, like this. Um, more coverage, the better. Okay, and so this one's gonna go on just the same way as the other one went on. We're gonna do this. We're gonna fill up the saw curve. Also this, this through the roof stuff, it's kind of thin. Um, so when you, when you put it up to the saw curve, it wants to go into it a lot more than some of the other types do. Uh, just because it's nice and thin. And then we're gonna do that, okay? We're gonna do just a little bit on the corner here. That's it. You don't wanna do more than that. You don't wanna come right down the side. All this. You know, when the roof, when I when I actually come to do these shingles, I'm gonna lift up on this stuff. So, or when the roofer comes to re-roof this in 20 years, it's gonna lift up on all this. And we don't want it silicone completely because then it's just gonna be junk. They're gonna have to redo everything. Okay. Fill this up. Okay, brought some water up this time. So just spray some water on you. And then you can kind of when you get when you get a big glob like that. Access, just take it off and put it behind. And it really goes a lot better if this silicone's not sticking to your finger. So make sure if it starts to stick, if it starts to stick, you just use, you know, come up here, get the stickiness off your finger on your pants a little bit, wet your fingers down again. And then you'll get that nice smooth look, you know, with the with the silicone here. That's what you're looking for. You don't want it all rough and bulgy or whatever. You want it kind of forced in and smooth. I'm gonna show you something here. Okay, so this one, it's not really going anywhere, but if you find that your saw curve is a little wider or the, the piece wants to kind of float, because sometimes they'll try to float out on you a little bit, especially when you start putting these ones on top and you're kind of irritating this one a bit. You just take a piece of them, piece of a small piece of scrap like this, right? Okay. Just gonna bend it over. We'll put it right in half. Flatten it with your hammer. Okay. And now you're just gonna stick that piece. You're gonna stick it in the back there. Okay. And you can use whatever you want that you've got to kind of 
you know that you've got to kind of put that in right and so you just push it in a bit just like that okay and that's gonna help hold it while the silicone sets up now that one it won't go anywhere now you know um, so once the silicone sets up it won't go anywhere but you know also when we get to the top up there we don't want to look back down and see oh this one this one kind of floated away while we weren't paying attention so it is nice to put a couple pieces in like that you know also when you're working with lead for the day uh you know you you get it all over your pants if you're cutting if you're cutting in lead and you are shooting up lead dust or whatever or you're just putting your hands on stuff when you get home just make sure you take your stuff off and go and put it in the wash you know you don't want your young kids uh running up and trying to hug on you when you got you know lead lead all over yourself so um you know obviously kids uh especially under six years old are really affected by lead so try not to just don't bring it home to them okay now we're just now we're just going up the side and and it's pretty easy the next steps are pretty easy and then the next critical part is just at the at the top so let's measure this out and so when i measure these ones i'm just going to come right here right and i'm going to show you what i do even before uh okay there we are even before i place this next piece on i'm going to show you what i do okay so i know where that piece of lead is coming down right there on that blue line right so i'm going to take this torpedo level and this is the difference right here you want you want a job where you can look at the lead and so i'm just going to scribe a little plumb line on there okay and every piece i go up i'm going to scribe a little plumb line just like that and you want to look at a professional job versus an amateur job you can see it from the road when people put crooked lead on okay and it's tough because if you look at if you look at these brick okay this brick is literally so far out of level right and so these cuts are but that plumb line is going to dictate everything and so when you look up at this and you see nice plumb pieces going all the way up it looks really professional and uh also i just want to mention this is the one spot on the chimney where we're not going to get four inches of coverage because all that that we've bent around the corner we've lost a little bit here okay so i've got two and three quarters inches of coverage right there which is fine and we can actually we could actually cheat this piece over a little bit more and and try to get three inches out of it so um oh shoot don't mess with it after it started Okay, so now I've got this plumb line here. I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm gonna, instead of going to the four inches, now I like to just go to three like this. I put the three there. Okay, so now I'm roughly, it's 11 and a half. Yeah, so it's gonna be the same size cut. So 13 inches on both sides. So two pieces at 13 inches. Okay, this piece goes in just like this. And basically what we're gonna do is try to find a sweet spot in there where we feel like we're all the way to the back and just bend it down for a minute okay well it didn't go all the way in because you know the saw cuts round and i didn't overcut a lot here so so what we're going to do is just nip these corners kind of in the same fashion where the saw blade is just kind of rounded and then we'll stick it back in stick it back in and, and you notice right away we went a little deeper okay so now what we're going to do is find that line and none of the, none of this matters we're going to pull this piece in or out depending on how how we need to get to that line okay so i'm i'm on the line there and i just need to get more on the bottom so this is going to come down and if i push if i pull this out and push down on it it brings it to the line here okay so now i'm at the line i'm going to hold it at the line that's it and so every piece you know once i silicone this the next piece is just the same right and so i've got all this coverage that's going to uh intertwine or step with the shingles that go in and uh you know some people don't like the idea of doing it like this um, some people would rather do 
shingles and then put their step flashing up as they go um, which you know I subscribe to that way of doing it too I think it's a good way to do it I don't like when people do it with aluminum flashing um, either copper step flashing or lead I mean you can cut lead into pieces of step flashing really easily and lead bends really nice around the corners and the idea is that you know the lead is sitting on top and, and you never want to cut lead at the roof ever it it always bends onto the roof by a couple inches so you'd have a nice straight line here right uh, and then you'd actually leave a piece and bend it over bend it over so it all is there but um, and, and that way because your house moves up and down a little bit um, and so what it does is it just allows everything to be free so the chimney is kind of free of the roof um, and that's a good way to do it too. Just don't use uh, copper step flashing. Use use lead or use uh, what would I say? Use copper step flashing or lead step flashing. Don't use aluminum. So I I do it this way, the old-fashioned way, where you weave it with the shingles, because I've never had a problem, and I've never really seen a big problem from doing it that way. Um, I don't nail the lead. The net the lead never gets nailed to the roof ever ever you don't ever do it and so if you want to like this you know this is doing nothing here so you can actually cut all this back right you cut all this back and then so when you go to nail your shingle on you don't come within like seven inches of the roof you know or you know of the chimney on the roof so so that way you miss all your lead and your lead's still free and and, and it can move a bit you know i've never had a problem doing it this way so i like to do it this way Okay, this piece goes in. There you go, nice and plumb. Get a little scrap piece. We'll bend it in half, flatten it out. that piece is gonna be it, it can't move you know it's it's literally stuck here now between the silicone and that little piece I put in that's it that's all you need All right, so we're on the, the last piece at the top here. And I just wanna show you quickly how I do it. So it's important that, you know, this piece a lot of times will come to the end, right? But that's not the end of it. You need to come with this last piece, measure over four inches, and then have everything else hang out beyond the chimney just like just like this one does everything hangs beyond and then you can just kind of mark the back side of what it does and this piece this piece here we're not just gonna cut that off like that we'll, we'll cut it off like this you know up I'll show, I'll show you okay 
So we're gonna leave, that's our mark. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra on. So let's just cut it down like this. And this will all get covered up. So if the cut's not the best, no big deal. Cut it down to that point somewhere. to our plumb line and now we're gonna um, make sure that's on properly now we're gonna bend this under kind of in the same way we were doing the other ones that's just gonna help hold it and then we'll bend this down make sure we're still on our plumb line good bend this down this is going to tear a little bit at the corner here but i'm not really worried about that okay just like that and now we just have to make sure so we have another piece of lead coming in this slot so we have to make sure that this piece isn't going to stay high take a trowel and get in there and just kind of flatten it down you know that's it we can put that one on so that side's already in and I've just got these two cuts to make. Uh, so I have the apron piece. Uh, this side is also always going to have an apron. Anytime you have something like this is always going to be an apron. So we'll do the apron piece that so will bend up and around and then we'll do the top piece. This will be the cap that comes down over that. All right, not bad, not bad. I get a little tiny crack there, but no big deal. Again, I've measured this piece off for of the shingle to make sure I'm parallel with the shingles here. to cut five inch overhang on both sides on this oh well oh well messed it up shoot that's way too much for this i'll have to um I'll have to just cut it in place here okay wrap this can just take and take and mark this. So I've got a little bit of excess there too. I could take and mark that. So I'm getting ready to call it for the day. Uh, I wasn't able to take a run and get the shingles. So uh, this is how I'm going to leave it. Uh, the lead's all done. I put this uh, synthetic underlayment on. This is just Owens Corning's brand. Uh, it's not the same brand they had on the roof, but it, but it's, it's just as good. Owen Corning, Owens Corning products are, are pretty good. So uh, I've just got that stapled down. I've just got it resting over the lead and I tuck a couple shingles in like this. Some over the peak. I'll throw my blankets over the top and just throw some weight on them and it'd be good i should be able to take water uh no problem for the night and the reason i didn't go get the shingles is they're over an hour away so uh i, I couldn't just go to my local place and get these same shingles so i'm just getting back from uh my round trip excursion this morning i had to drive uh 
had to drive quite a bit to go get shingles and I think it took me about two and a half hours round trip just to grab just to grab some shingles that matched and usually in normal times you don't have to run that far to get shingles but these were the only people that had this particular uh, brand and color of shingles and so I'm here and getting ready to you know put all these shingles on which you know it shouldn't it shouldn't take me very long uh, it's just a few shingles so it'll be pretty quick to button up I just wanted to point something out to you here so I was looking at this and how you know remember how I was commenting yesterday on the nail line so it seems that certain teed is actually saying that this nail line here see the blue from the top of the blue to the bottom of the blue is actually they're saying you can nail that whole thing which is strange to me because the nail lines actually here I don't know why they're telling people that you could actually nail here and I think that's really just bad on certain teeth because you can see where that shingle overlaps here see where it's double thick and then it's only single layer that it's double thick right here that's where you'd want to nail it so I'm going to be nailing these on the nail line here where it's double thick. Uh, anything above this line, uh, to me, is just high nailed and that's bad practice. So I've got my first, uh, I, I got these shingles on and I've got my lead all back where I want it. I had to re, you know, take the nails out of these and reset these on top of the shingles. So this layer of shingles got cut all the way up to the chimney. And then this had to get nailed back on this uh, piece that holds my apron. Okay, and so I'm just going to show you how this first one goes. So I have, um, uh, I want all three of these pieces of lead under this first shingle. Don't try to layer them. Just put all three of them under this, under the first shingle, right? And then I'm going to show you um, an issue that uh, some people have. Okay, so you notice I've got this piece of lead. Okay. I put this one down on top of this one, okay? And then you, you know, you want to layer these, right? But it's not so critical where you have to layer every single one. I mean, if you can, you do it, but sometimes you can't. So, so what happens is that little piece of lead starts sticking out, right? And you can let that run if you want, but for some people, it bothers them, right? So, uh, what you can do is you just you just nip that off, right? You cut it, you know, flush with the shingle or, or back just a bit. Okay, but let me show you what happens with the next one. Sometimes this is what happens, right? If I put this next shingle on here, get it all lined up. Oh, okay, so I've got it lined up now. And look how much is sticking on, right? Sticking, sticking over with the lead, right? Okay, well that doesn't look the best, right? And then to the next piece is gonna be even more. Sorry, there you go, you can see that now. The next piece is gonna be even more, right? And so people get confused um, because you know, the first time, the first one, you know, we'll just nip that no problem. The second one is a little bit different here, right? Cause now look, you've got it here. You can't just nip that one because you have to cut here, okay? So I had an experienced roofer about two months ago. He came and he cut all my lead like this and I literally lost it because what I'm trying to get is, is I went four inches of coverage of overlap on each piece of lead, right? Well, you can imagine what happened on the next one. He cut it way up like that, you know? And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden now I only have like an inch of coverage or maybe a little bit more on some of my lead and this guy was supposed to be a really experienced roofer he's been doing it his whole life he said he'd been doing it like this for 40 years the guy actually put nail holes he, he put nails through my lead through my brand new finished lead right and so anyhow I was irate and and maybe it wasn't the guy's fault maybe he had just never been taught a different way or never Maybe he just wasn't willing to learn. So I had to meet him on the job and, and explain to him um, what was wrong with what he did after he, he drove nails through my waterproof substrate 
and caught my lead way up like this. Roofers, like just, they love to cut lead. I don't know why, they just, they cut, they'll cut it off clean right here. And it's literally the worst thing you can do. So anyhow, you can, you can nip this, but you cannot cut up any higher than this, right in line with that, right in line with the vertical piece. You cannot cut higher than that because what you're doing is you're actually starting to chew into the overlap. You know, this is chewing way into the overlap on that piece and you just can't do that. So to, so all you have to do, literally all you have to do, right? Is okay, we'll just take this shingle and we'll put two pieces of lead here, okay? Now we've got it, now we've got it. So I nip, I'll nip that first one. I'll nip that first one and now we're fine on the next ones going up. You know, simple as that. And all that guy had to do was just put a piece of lead under another shingle and he wouldn't have had to violently cut my lead like that. Um, so anyhow, I just figured I'd share that. Okay, this is a, a problem you're gonna run into all the time when you're either doing roofing or some chimney flashing work is your piece is just too short. Um, a lot of people are tempted to knit. You just put in and nail in a short piece right through the lead and everything here. But you really wanna avoid that and you don't want any short pieces there. You're better off you know, s sliding this piece over and putting a small piece in there, um, if anything. But, so this is, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. So I just measured from this seam here and over uh, this manufacturer wants you to overlap six inches so you just measure over and make sure you get your six inch overlap right there i thought it was six and a half but this this manufacturer it says six inches so um you get your six inch overlap from this seam right there to there um it does kind of line up with this one a little bit but it's really not a big deal you'd rather You'd rather just do it like this, and then and now I have this big piece that comes in all the way all the way over here, and uh, I don't have to nail uh, a small piece here, and I don't have to nail through my leg because when I nail here, I'm gonna nail about seven inches away from the chimney. That's just how I do it. I'll show you on this one here, right here. So I just nail. I put a couple in, and this is how I nail the ends of, of the shingles. I um, I always put two in the ends, and then I fill in the middle. Um, and you'd have to have to watch out um, where you're nailing because obviously you don't want a nail to show through on the seam. So you just gotta be aware of where the seams are and stay away. Um, just stay away a couple inches with your nails. Um, but that's that. All right, folks, there you have it. That's the finished product. I got all the shingles on, all the cap shingles on. Everything is done. Ready to pack up and get out of here. Got a couple more things to bring off the roof. Got to blow that other lower roof, and I'm done. So this is what it looks like, uh, all finished. So now that this is done, I will say, because I'm very confident in this lead job, that this lead job cannot leak. Water cannot come in through this flashing. It just won't happen. Um, and so the only way water is going to come in is through penetration through the masonry. So um, the next step, if for some reason water is still coming in, we know it's not coming in through the lead. Um, chances are the way that we're going to have to fix it. It's not going to be by spraying sealer on there either, by the way. Spraying sealer doesn't fix a water problem. It helps prevent issues, but it's not going to fix water problems. Um, so this cap up here, um, the next step, we'll be ordering a custom cap to extend all the way out beyond uh, the brickwork. So we're, we're trying to keep water off because uh, a lot of water is going to absorb through that concrete and then get inside and wick into the house through there. Um, so this was the first step. We're going to try it, see how it works. Um, hopefully it solves everything. Um, but the next step is going to be changing that cap. So this is how I did the ridge shingles. I just have a little piece of silicone here, um, just a little bit, and that's all you want, just right here. And so I put that there, so I'm gonna help hold this piece of flashing um, in case the wind ever hits that piece of flashing. It can't push it out. 
so it'll be stuck here. Um, and I did the same thing on the other corner. And don't ever, ever, ever silicone these verticals. During installation, afterwards, if you're having a water problem, you never silicone here, and you never silicone here. If you're a professional, you don't silicone there. This needs to be able to let moisture out. If moisture gets in there and need, your chimney condensates, water needs to come out. Um, and also it can get a little bit of air back there, maybe help dry things out. Do not ever silicone things up 100%. This lead needs to move. If you silicone this, the lead can't move. It wants to expand and contract with the heat and cool, when it heats and cools. Uh, and if it can't do that, you're just taking life away from the lead uh, because it can't move. So it's gonna try to move back and forth and get all wrinkled up and nasty, and then it's just gonna wear right through. Uh, this is how I do the, the ridge shingles. So I start from here and I work my way back uh, and then I just cap it off like this. Uh, I bring it and I overlap a couple and then I put this, uh, you know, the four nails on like that over this little trim piece and uh, just silicone the top of the nail holes. And that's it. Finished job. We're out of here.